Look, fundamentally, Eminem's music, I just, I don't get a lot of it. I don't get a lot of it, okay? It's not for me. I don't, I don't get a lot of it, all right? That's just me personally. Anyway, hold on, hold on. Eminem got, got, got this instrumental. I've told this story. Because Noel's an MGK stand, shut up. I've told this story before. When I was working at a studio, I was a runner at a studio. And we got to hear this, like, right before it came out. These dudes pulled up in a parking lot. And they threw the doors open. And we just hear this. Just raw. Just fucking. We come out the studio. We're like. The fuck is that? And these dudes just blowing big gas. They... And you and them, bro. They was doing the car test. We were like, word. It was crazy. <clears throat> I met I met Riza uh, at that studio. It was a 10-second interaction. It was wild. We knew he was coming, and the producer we were working for, he was like, he kind of had a relationship with RZA, so... And if you don't know who RZA is, he's from Wu-Tang. Yeah, I met RZA, I was like 20 or some shit. So RZA comes in the studio, and my boy's family was like deep in music, so whatever. Fucking side note, hold up. Let me show you where the studio's at. Hold on. Where the fuck is this video? Bro, there's this there's this old video. Man, where the fuck is this shit? Bruh. Okay, so there's this old video that came out on YouTube like way early and it was like it was like proof that uh Tupac is still alive. It's like it's this dude who looks like Tupac and he's standing in a parking lot. Cause, Cause, the studio we worked in was the old Outlaws studio. I watched that in, like, I was in high school, and I watched the shit. That's where the fucking studio was that we worked at. We end, I end up working there. Fucking four four years later or some shit, which was crazy. So that's the studio I worked at. That was that parking lot that all that shit went down in. So anyway. Fast forward, I'm working in the studio. We know Rizzo's coming in, blah, blah. We're waiting there, and uh, he pulls up with his son. And Rizzo comes in the studio just like this. No fucking exaggeration. He just comes in wearing some fucking anime pants and a bucket hat. They're straight-up raver pants. He just walks in. He's like, yo, yo, peace, 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 peace. And this dude is like this tall. He's fucking huge. My head is like at his chest. And his hands, his hands are like this. Peace, 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 peace. Let me tell you, I've heard RZA speak in real life and his fucking voice clips in real life too. It's crazy. This motherfucker dapped me up. He didn't even look me in the eyes, bro. He looked over me. He just looked over me and went like this. Like he was blind or some shit. (laughs) Is this it? Bro, this is it. This is it. Bro, this is it. Hold up. Hold up, man. This is the fucking studio. This is the studio. This is an old motel, and this dude, he turned each room into a studio. It was crazy. And the next unit over was fucking um, the promoters who, like, either created EDC or, like, one of the other ones. They worked out of that fucking studio. It was crazy. So, this is it. This is the fucking it. (laughs) <laughs> I remember this shit. Yo, this is a holla back exclusive. <laughs> Bro. Bro. Oh, my God, man. Me and my boy Paul used to say this shit just casually to each other. He'd be like, yo, man, this is a holla back exclusive. I just stole a pizza from the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Small names, you know I 
just moved out LA. Smaller names who you know, I just moved out LA. But I'm Philadelphia until I die, yo. The rumors is true. Tupac is fucking living, yo. I just seen him in the studio, man. He just dissed Eminem for putting out that last album. Jermaine Dupree, because he fucked with Janet Jackson. And I don't know why, but he just dissed Mace. I need y'all to be quiet, man. Holla back exclusive. Molly Manson, yo. Watch, watch. They go park with his motherfucking. Guys, let me tell you. Let me tell you, first of all. In that parking lot, the distance from where they're standing to that camera, you get your fucking ass beat so quick. That that distance is like maybe ten fucking feet. It's so small. And then and then the back alley is so long. Unless you had a car waiting, you're not getting out of there, man. You're not getting out of there. I'm Philly till I die. I have cleaned that fucking toilet. I've cleaned that fucking toilet. You know how fucking embarrassing that shit is? Oh my, ooh, that story. That story, man. We had Compton Menace from Black Wall Street coming in one night. Let me tell you, this studio, this studio was not like a polished, like, oh, we got big, cool artists coming in. We got fucking, it was like, it was gangster motherfuckers coming in there, in there, like on the end of their career or with no career at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's in Studio City. Me working there was a whole movie. I could write a whole fucking movie about my experience there. Anyway, we're in the studio with RZA. It's RZA and this rapper, under, underground rapper, old, old as hell. His name's Ed OG. It's those two dudes in the studio. RZA gets behind the console, and he tell he tells like the head producer. It was two, it was two dudes that we worked for. He goes, uh, okay. He's like, he's like, y'all could play me three beats. And it was like so fucking intense. They they play him a beat and he's like kind of vibing with it. And they play another and he's vibing with it. And he plays like one more. And he listens to the three beats. And then he goes, Play me one more. So they play him one more and it's four beats. He's like, I like two and three. And he just left. <laughs> That's it. I like two and three. And he fucking dipped. He was out of there. <laughs> We were like, what the fuck just happened? He just came in that bitch and and then he left. It was wild. Yeah, shout out Ed OG. He is a Boston legend. I don't think Riz is socially awkward. I just think he doesn't give a fuck. I've not met Jizza, nah. So we had we had crazy, crazy shit happen in there. Fucking who else? Um Oh yeah, when Compton Menace came through, that motherfucker's big dog. That dude, he like, he stepped up to the, because the door, it was like a motel door. That motherfucker came up to the door, and then he like walked into the other room where the console was, and like, this is like the top of the door frame. This motherfucker had to go. <laughs> I couldn't believe that shit. I was like, yo, <laughs> this dude is massive, dog. So then here's my toilet cleaning story real quick. This shit is so whack. This shit was so whack. I think some some artist was coming in and the fucking the dudes running the studio were bugging out. They was like, Yo man, this shit, they're from Boston. Yo man, this shit gotta be tip top. They're crazy. I'm like, all right. They give me like some like cleaning shit, some generic cleaning supply and like crusty ass paper towels, and they're like, Go clean the bathroom. I'm like, bro, what? This is a bathroom for every studio. Why the fuck? And he, like, gets in my face. He's like, go clean that fucking bathroom. I'm like. And it was like, I'm like, I'm here. And I'm feel- and at the time, I'm feeling like, is this, like, one of these moments where I got to do this and, like, make my career? So, now relax. Relax. I get in there. And I and I, I I take the fucking cleaning shit and I walk out to the toilet and I shut the door. I wipe down the sink handles and I then I just stood in there. <laughs> I just stood in there looking at my phone. I'm like, man, fuck this fool. What are you talking about? Clean the bathroom. So I stood in there for about a minute. And I, I came back inside and I racked that shit up. No, no, no. Kristen, here's the thing. 
This wasn't a studio where you just go, man, I'm going to walk out. I'm going to leave, dude. This scary motherfucker, his name was Chills. I don't even know his boy's name. He had this homie. He'd always roll with him. If I was like, man, I'm leaving. Chills, Chills and the dudes running the studio would have been like, what the fuck you say? I said, I'm. No, you staying right here. All right, all right. <laughs> His name wasn't even Chills, bro. It was Black Chills, bro. I got punked. That It was that shit. They made me feel like a hoe. I was like, fuck this shit. Fuck this shit, man. How'd I quit? So they did that shit to me, and I was like, yo, this is fucking whack. I do not fuck with these dudes. This is some corny ass shit. I'm like 20. These are grown men. They're like in their fucking late 20s, early 30s. So my boy, his mom is like, she got fucking pull in the music world. So she calls the producer and she's like, and she's from Detroit. She don't fuck around. She's like, who the fuck? You got my boys cleaning bathrooms? That's not the fuck I sent them over there for. So the next day we came back, the motherfuckers apologized. They got their cards pulled. So then shortly thereafter, they got into some drama with music licensing and they ended up getting a fat ass deal for music publishing. So after that happens, they get this music publishing deal and shit's going weird. Like they got random ass people in the studio all day, every day. And they're like collecting tons of music to build up this album to just, or this catalog to build up for distribution. So we're just kind of sitting there. And for multiple sessions, we just sit there and watch them collect all this lame-ass stock royalty music that's clearly for, like, reality TV and shit. And we just had to sit there till like, 2 or 3 in the morning, and then we left. And then after they got this deal, uh, they, they found out that it wasn't going to be paid for, like, a long period. And the dudes went broke. So they had to close the studio, and they moved back to where they came from. Something like that. They didn't even really tell me the full story, but here's the fucking weird part. Oh, what is this chick's name? Hold up. Hold up. Who? Fuck. What was her fucking name? It's not Carrie Washington. What the fuck was her name? <clears throat> Damn it. All right, so this is the last thing that happened. I don't, I'm not going to find this fucking movie. But basically, they got some deal for like a Tyler Perry film. No, nah, it, was, it was like a Tyler Perry film, and they got a deal, and they had to, they were modifying a soundtrack, and they wanted, like, dialogue from one of the act actresses. <clears throat> so, she was supposed to come in for a, like, a voiceover or some shit? Oh, what the fuck was it? Not nah, Gabrielle Union, come on. I seriously can't. I'm I'm not going to remember the name. No, not Taraji P. Henson. <clears throat> oh. So, whatever. So, me and my boy, we're, like, supposed to be part of the session. And then they hit up their other homie, who's, like, actually an accomplished producer. He had, like, he had done, like, good work. So, we show up to the studio, and then she pulls up. And mind you, this studio looked like shit. It looked like dog shit. So she gets to the studio, and then here's what's fucked, man. Neither of the dudes who run the studio fucking show up. <laughs> so she's there, and half the studio's cleaned out because they were leaving. And it's me, my boy, and this dude. I'm going to just call him Dub because I'm not going to say his name. It's me, my boy, and this dude Dub, this white dude. So it's like us three fucking bozos. This dude was a producer, but he wasn't, like, famous. He wasn't, like, fucking, like, Metro Boomin or some shit like that. Like, he's just, like, a dude who's, like, has some credits. And then it's just her. And she's looking at us, like, what the fuck are we doing here? And we're, like, we don't really know. And she, she off the, off rip, she's, like, this studio smells like piss. What the fuck is this? What are we doing here? We were, like, <laughs> um... Yeah. 
yeah um you're supposed to do some voiceover work that we don't know what you're supposed to do so she like steps outside and she gets on the phone and i'm sitting in this bitch on a saturday like what the fuck are we doing here bro and so then she like calls her agent or something and then like the there's like some discussion that happens outside on the phone and then she goes she just comes back in she's like yeah i'm gonna leave and we're like yeah cool she leaves as me my boy and dub and we're like looking at each other and we're like uh and then we all kind of like commiserate about working with them and we're like man these guys are fucking they're like they're weird like <laughs> they don't got their shit together this whole scenario is fucked up sarah i was just a runner i was just a runner who said carrie underwood i fucking smack you right now what the fuck is her name? I'm I'm looking it up. I'm trying to look it up. It makes it so much funnier if you could like see her face, cause she was like so put together, like f- like famous people, like they dress well and shit. And the way she came at that, she, oh my god, man, she's like, what the fuck are we doing here? It smells like piss. <laughs> I, bro, I'm not gonna find this shit. I'll have to look it up later. She was like a B name actress. I can't. She's like done shit. I just don't know. What the fuck? She was black. Um, it was a fucking. It was a Tyler Perry. It was either a TV show or a movie. Fuck. What year? Shit, bro. That whole fucking period of my life is such a blur. Anyway, hey, I'll 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 dig it up. I'll dig it up. You're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get it. But yeah. <laughs> 